Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A very warm welcome to our worship by uh, stream on YouTube for the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. This week we celebrate the fact that much of our life is returning to the cathedral building. And so we offer this Eucharist with a sense of thanksgiving. Let us pray. Almighty God, to, to whom, whom all, all hearts, hearts are open, open all, all desires, desires known, and, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
let us pray. Bountiful God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy and to live according to it, that we may grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book Genesis. These are the descendants of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac was forty years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean of Padam Aram, sister of Laban, the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife, because she was barren, and the Lord granted his prayer, and his wife Rebekah conceived. The children struggled together within her, and she said, if it is to be this way, why do I live? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples born of you shall be divided. One shall be stronger than the other, the elder shall serve the younger. When her time to give birth was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy mantle, so they named him Esau. Afterwards his brother came out, with his hand gripping Esau's heel, so he was named Jacob. Isaac was sixty years old when she bore them. When the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man living in tents. Isaac loved Esau, because he was fond of game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once, when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field, and he was famished. Esau said to Jacob, Let me eat some of that red stuff, for I am famished. Therefore he was called Edom. Jacob said, First sell me your birthright. Esau said, I am about to die, of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, Swear to me first. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank, and rose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
second reading is from the letter to the Romans. There is therefore now no consideration of those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of the life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their mind on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you who are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, through the, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also, through his Spirit that dwells in you. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Then the disciples came and asked him, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The reason I speak to them in parables is that seeing they do not perceive, and hearing they do not listen, nor do they understand. With them indeed is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah that says, You will indeed listen, but never understand. And you will indeed look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes, so they might not look with their eyes and listen with their ears, and understand with their heart in turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. For the Gospel of the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my Redeemer. The world is full of comparisons, so much so that they seem normal and unremarkable. In another life, I was responsible for developing statistical standards. Indeed, I once helped develop a standard for the variable sex. That was actually quite complicated and was no laughing matter for people 
who felt they were not included in the categories of male and female. But it's not only st statisticians who classify. We all do it. Think of the common ways we classify and compare each other by ethnicity, education, clothing, wealth, skin colour and gender, among many. But there are some comparisons which are probably sinful. Comparing ourselves to each other can lead to envy, pride and hatred and a view that the grass is greener on the other side. On the other hand, you could say that comparison with others can lead to inspiration and drive to be transformed. But drawing goals from someone else does mean that you think that the grass is greener on the other side. You are not discerning God's path for you. There is only one you in the eyes of God and therefore only one individual and unique road. Each of us is made in the image of God equally. So the grass is not greener, it is just different for you and for me. I am guilty of the envy, pride and hatred that results from comparison. When I compare my career to others, I see myself wanting. I didn't advance as far as I wanted. I never earned what I wanted. I wonder why I did not seek a different career. And then I wonder why someone else has the career I wanted. Envy, in other words. But when I compare myself against those whom I judge to be not as accomplished as me, then I can easily become self-satisfied and enjoy that feeling, the sin of pride. And at the extreme, I come to hate those who I think have what I barely recognise as my deepest desire. Those desires are from the profound reaches of our hearts. It is the thing almost unknown to us that we desire most and that give rise to the most illogical fears and loathings. On occasions I have instantly disliked someone because deep down they represented a threat to my very self what they had, who they were, what I thought they thought about me, led to a confrontation with my deepest fears and desires, which was threatening. All these things work together to create hatred. It is a struggle to see the hatred coming from an inner desire, barely accessible to conscious thought. One example of the shifty terrain of comparisons is the relationship between Esau and Jacob described in Genesis. The two are contrasted and compared starkly. Esau is the man of action, outdoorsy, foolish, a belly thinker loved by Isaac. Jacob, on the other hand, is the man of contemplation, indoorsy, cunning and a brain thinker loved by Rebecca. Instead of being regarded as different but equal, the brothers are cast into a place of opposition and comparison. Having proposed that comparisons are dangerous, sinful and harmful to the psych, there is one comparison that you should make. It's the difference between spirit and sin and death. Paul spends some time making this distinction in his letter to the Romans. The law of the spirit versus the law of sin and death. Life and peace opposed to death. Pleasing God or not pleasing God. Spirit of Christ compared to a body dead from sin immortality and mortality. Spirit is more desirable than flesh. 
this comparison and the choice of spirit is a promise that sets us free from our fleshly attachments to envy, pride and hatred. So having moved from the comparison you don't want in Genesis to the comparison you should make in Romans, we move to Matthew and the comparison you must make. This is the comparison of responses to sowing the seed of faith. There are four responses. First, you can hear but not understand Jesus and have the seed stolen away by evil. Second, you hear the word but fall away at the first hurdle. Third, you hear but choose the world and wealth anyway. Fourth, you hear and understand and so the secrets of the kingdom are revealed to you and you bear fruit. Clearly, we should want to be in the fourth category of hearing and understanding. We should want to hear and understand the words of Jesus so that we too may be saved like the disciples and bear much fruit. We have a choice as to which ground our seeds fall upon. If we choose the kingdom, we have abundance and more abundance. If we reject the kingdom, then we have nothing and less than nothing. We have to be careful. We need to be cautious that the words we hear are the words of Jesus, who sets us free from envy, pride and hatred, who leads us into the kingdom and immortality, who takes us away from comparisons and the desires of the world. We want to bear much fruit in response to Jesus' words. The difference between hearing and understanding and not hearing and understanding is the comparison we must have. Our goal is to be counted among Jesus' disciples so that we too hear and understand and are free from sin and death. Everything we do should be oriented towards hearing and understanding, living in the spirit, not evil and death. For God is watching and waiting for us to abandon envy, pride and hatred and come home. Christ Jesus, help us walk towards you and with you. Help us listen to your call, to the road you have laid out for each of us. Let us see that our grass is greener when we embrace you. Amen. Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, 
we acknowledge by the baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. Loving God, open our eyes to the deep mysteries of your purpose. Help us to glimpse the extraordinary in our everyday lives. Make us agents of your transforming love. Help us to see the world as an inheritance held in trust. In the grandeur of your creation and its simplicity, in its power and its gentleness, we rejoice in all that you have given. Teach us to live wisely and responsibly, in harmony with you and all you have made. God of grace, hear our prayer. We bring to mind the many areas of the world experiencing hardship through conflict, violence and hostility. We pray for those oppressed by harsh governments, for those in countries destroyed by war and for the dispossessed. Open our hearts and minds to your gentle presence. Teach us to resolve our differences without violence and cruelty, that wars may cease and all your people learn to live in harmony. God of grace, Hear our prayer. We pray for our nation and for all the nations of the world as we continue to respond to the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. We give thanks for the leadership of our nation in this time of uncertainty and pray for your guidance as they seek to find a balance between personal safety and economic recovery. Continue to strengthen and sustain all those who are serving in response. God of grace, Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for your church around the world and for all who proclaim the gospel by word and deed. Pray especially today for the Anglican Church of Papua New Guinea and the Diocese of Grafton. In our diocese, we pray for the parish of Laidley, for the household of deacons, and for the staff and students of St Luke's Anglican School, Bundaberg. We ask for your guidance for all parishes seeking new incumbents. We bring before you our Cathedral Outreach for July. May we be generous in support of the Stepping Stones Clubhouse, Cooparoo, providing meaning, purpose and hope for people with a mental illness. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all peoples, we pray for each other, for our families and our friends for all that we are to each other and all that we share. May your spirit of love grow in us. Help us to reach out and welcome to those around us and to those we are connecting with in many different ways. That We may build relationships of trust, generosity and respect. God of grace, hear our prayer. Pray for all who are in need, for those who live in poverty, those who suffer rejection or discrimination, those who are dealing with anxiety or grief. Spirit of love and compassion grow in us. Increase our concern for one another. Pray especially for those named in our prayer lists, for those close to our hearts, for those who are silently enduring illness or pain. We ask for your blessing on all who care for those in need. God of grace, Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for your faithful servants in every age and every place whose life has borne witness to your word, remembering especially today, Sydney James Kirkby. We give thanks for the lives of your people from our community whose yearly remembrance occurs this week. Alan Young, Harbord Lambton, Kathleen Robertson, Henry Singen, Frank Bromley, Arthur Gillespie, Peter Shelbach, Madeline Byrne, Natalie Gray, Patricia Hogarth, Mignonette Johnston, Benjamin Brazier, John Dale, Gabriel Herbert and Gladys Wicks. May you be our constant companion until our journey here on earth is over and we come to meet you, secure in your promise of everlasting life. God of grace, Hear our prayer.
Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith we may by your grace receive through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to the Lord's table. Let us confess our sin in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our, our Maker and, and our, our Judge, we, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and keep you in life eternal. Amen. Amen. We are the body of Christ. His spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings to your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give us thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, faithful God, always and everywhere. For with your only begotten Son and life-giving Spirit, you are the one true God from everlasting to everlasting. At the dawn of time you wrought from nothing a universe of beauty and splendor bringing light from darkness and order from chaos. You formed us, male and female, in your image and endowed us with creative power. We turned away from you, but you did not abandon us. You called us by name and searched us out, making a covenant of mercy giving the law and teaching justice by the prophets. And so we praise you, joining with your faithful people of every time and place, singing the eternal song.
the fullness of time was come, you sent your Son to be born of Mary. Bright image of your glory, who learnt obedience to you in all things, even to death on the cross, breaking the power of evil, freeing us from sin and putting death to flight. You raised him from death, exalting him to glory, and the new day dawned. On the night he was handed over, your son Jesus Christ shared food with his friends, his companions on the way. While at table he took bread, blessed and broke it, and giving it to them said, Take eat, this is my body. He took a cup of wine and again giving thanks he gave it to them and said, This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. Do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, living God, as we obey his command, we remember his life of obedience to you, his suffering and death, his resurrection and exaltation, and his promise to be with us forever. With this bread and this cup, we celebrate his saving death until he comes. Great is the mystery of faith. Except we pray our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon our celebration that all who eat and drink at this table may be strengthened by Christ's body and blood to serve you and the world. As one body and one holy people, may we proclaim the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, eternal God, now and forever. Jesus invites us to pray that we may be agents of the commonwealth of God coming on earth as in heaven. And so we pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save, Save us from the time of trial and, and deliver us from, from evil. For the kingdom, kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now, now and forever. forever. Amen. As this broken bread was once many grains which have been gathered together and made one bread. So may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom.
the gift of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and the blood of Christ. This is the Lord's table. All who seek God's mercy are welcome. pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we, we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep, Keep us, us in this hope that we have grasped, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Thanks for joining us for worship this morning. Um, our life is uh, refolding, if you like. Uh, the connection with the cathedral building and the community is uh, growing stronger day by day. Uh, tonight at uh, six o'clock we have Evensong live. It will, it will also be streamed, but there is the opportunity to be at worship, but you do need to pre-register. 
And then during the week, the meditation group returns to the building. So at the moment, we've got uh, a Eucharist on a Wednesday at lunchtime. The cathedral is open for private prayer. We have morning and evening prayer each day in the cathedral. Uh, many of those things are happening by Zoom as well. And we have some exciting studies unfolding uh, um, at this time. So I commend to you the cathedral website, particularly the What's On page. Uh, through that, you'll be able to connect with our life either in person or uh, through the virtual uh, reality that is the miracle of Zoom. We continue our worship with the missional hymn. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus the Christ, and the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. Amen. 